Hi guys, it's Beauty Slash Channel here. This video will be a speed up video of ombre tutorial with my comments uh, with it, so you still will learn a lot of useful information. Okay, so this is her B4 brows, and now we will see the after result, the shape, uh, the style she chosen herself. So she wanted to have this nice uh, ombre effect brows. So the first we will do is the mapping brows. Uh, because this is a speed up video about ombre, I will not spend too much time on it, but basically we are marking the front of the eyes, now the middle part with a thread method, now these middle parts for the beginning of the brow. The beginning of the brow is actually getting close, has to be close enough to this, this line, not over that line. And then I'm marking the ends for the brow and uh, the arches but again check out the full mapping tutorial in the description or in the corner now once you have your first draft it's very easy to show your client the shape and also different other shapes just by tweaking her um, brow up and down and after she confirms the shape of this brow it's time to draw the second brow using the thread uh, method and after i draw the second brow now it's time to make sure they are even. So what I do in its very crucial step, I actually outline with the white pencil because it creates a very nice uh, outline and you can really see the borders when it combines with the black pencil. You can clearly see whether they are even or not. And just using your eye, you can correct if something is uneven and then you can even double check that using the fee brows application and I find out whenever I don't use the white uh, pencil outline the shape of black pencils also loses very easily so just keep in mind outlining with white color really makes a huge uh, difference and now it's time for the procedure so what do we do first since it's a ombre brows with perfect outline the first thing to do is to create the actual outline now the movement of my hand is from up to down up to down and it's almost at the same place very very light pressure because you don't want to create very harsh outline you better do the harsh outline once you know how the skin to react how her skin reacts to your light pressure so basically after you do just a piece of the outline you erase it and see what's the residue for, f out of this for instance once i get to this place now it's time for me to take the wet tissue and uh, see what is left there because sometimes when you erase there's nothing left there so I would do just more harder pressure and if it's too dark then I know I have to have the lighter pressure later on when we get closer to the head of the brow because there I don't want to I don't want to have very visible outline I think this outline is fine I would say uh, that the ends are I, I would say this outline it's pretty much very visible so definitely I would lower my pressure when I get closer to the head but for the tail it's fine so it's a good point I did check out how the outline look like and now I'm just continue uh, doing the outline till I reach the head of the brow till I'm fast forwarding here and I'm obviously doing the voiceover just wanted, wanted to know you guys uh, if what kind of content you want me to record and if this is valuable or you feel I talk too slow or I talk too fast or I talk too too much or unclear I would really appreciate you guys leave some uh, comments about this so I can kind of improve and uh, have bring a better value for you guys next time so here I'm reaching the head of the brow so let's slow slow this down and again you see I'm always checking uh, what is what has been done because the the more important is the head so i don't want to overdo there you see the upper uh, my actual upper outline is much lighter because my pressure there was lighter and my goal was to have lighter upper part and darker lower part now for the front of the brow it's up to you whether you want to have the outline there or just very soft shaded front in this 
a particular case I did very light outline but usually actually I do not do I just uh, shade very lightly there at the front but let's see uh, what's what's the residue we will have after me shading I'm also very curious since I've done actually this recording a long time ago and now I'm doing the voiceover so now I'm wiping out uh, everything I've done and just notice how light the outline is this outline will come out after I put the secondary numbing cream so it will be very visible this is just perfect outline because it will disappear once it heals but it's a good guideline for you to do the front of the brow but here I'm just making it slightly darker I think it was too light uh, for me but if you're just seeing the outline if you just tiny bit still see the outline that is enough because after again after you put the secondary numbing cream it will get more visible I, I think I know why I did created this outline at the front because her original uh, desire for the brow is to have like this very shaded brow so if I would create more softer uh, boundaries more, more softer look brows I wouldn't do uh, much on the outline but hers was to have this very very perfect outlined uh, brows it's funny guys I'm sitting here at my home now doing this just lacking some communication I wish I could hear the feedback from you guys right away but I guess I will have to wait till I upload this video to uh, YouTube okay so now we have the outline uh, let's get back to <laughs> work we have the outline now it's time to fill in uh, the brows if you guys curious the detail uh, how I shade I also created I think two separate videos just uh, on latex and on even on the paper which is so you can see clearly how my uh, hand movement is there what is the uh, the pressure the speed of the machine uh, what machine I use and stuff like that basically I'm shading throughout the whole brow right now at this point I do not check uh, what is left there so I usually shade throughout the whole brow then I erase and see the result and shade one more time throughout the whole brow some people prefer to shade a, a, li a little bit a little part erase and then go on uh, for me it's more convenient to shade throughout the whole brow this way I won't have the patches because my hand movement will have this feeling to go on go on go on but once you erase you kind of forget what's your hand movement were at that time and then it kind of create more patches I would say the closer I'm getting to the brow the lighter pressure I have the more wider movement of my hand is especially at the front so this is a pendulum movement and it's more wider than I would do at the tail so at the tail you saw it's very almost at the same place but here I'm like trying to swings, make a swings from up to down, up to down and creating this lighter ombre. Please note at the bottom, I also shade a little bit more just because I want the bottom line to be more darker. And yeah, the upper part I shade less. Now it's time to erase everything and see the result. At this point her skin is already irritated so I decided to go and do the other brow while, while this brow will be under the numbing cream. But if you feel you still can, if it's not uh, too irritated, you can still go ahead and shade this brow one more time. Now I do exact same proce process for the her uh, left eyebrow I start with outline and then I am shading I will speed up this process and probably won't have any comments on this brow oh I actually wanted to also point out sometimes I get not sometimes I actually got a question how do you position yourself while you do shading or microblading I would say whatever makes you feel uh, comfortable so that you can hold your microblading or shading tool in the 90 degrees and you can feel more confident in uh, uh, the shading or microblading so sometimes you see the micro uh, fee brows artists they do the microblading from 
like the front from the lower part to upper part like sitting even next in front of the client that's what uh work it doesn't mean this way is better or the other way is better it's just uh this way they feel the flow of the hair strokes better but if you f sit behind the client and you feel the same way confident in your work just do it that way i i did had uh classes for few brows artists i did it attend the course as well i've tried to do that way it worked for me as well but i find out that i have to put my hand on the client's face or on the client's chest uh, i didn't like that part so i uh, for me it was the same comfortable to do this sitting behind the client this works very well for me so i think i will further speed up the video and probably will leave you alone or watching uh, this video just want to say uh, about the question how many paths should you do on the brow till you find out that the color uh, is good enough for you keep in mind that some of the skin is very tight very good so this darkness that you will see could uh, there's a chance it will be the same on the healed result and will not get layered this happened to me several times M maybe because i'm working on the asian skins which are a little bit better they bleed less and more tighter if it's especially younger skin so i usually explain to the client that uh the first after the first procedure you probably will see very light color this is just enough because we just want to as long as you can see the shape it's good enough the darkness the color everything is done on the second time on our touch up the first is just to do kind of the the shape to see the shape so you don't have to stress out about trying to achieve a darker look and then getting scared from the client texting you why my brows are so dark it's better they text you oh it's the color is gone or not enough rather that they text you it's too dark what what can you do to remove my brows this is much worse so if you feel if your clients say i want to have this darkness you just reach to that darkness show your client and that's it and explain to the client that there's a chance this color will drop out completely or drop 50 percent she should not worry about that okay i think uh, that's it for me talking <laughs> i hope uh was not too much but again i just really want to hear your guys uh, feedback maybe something i didn't cover uh in my talking part uh, please very welcome to text me under this video i'm uh, looking forward to read uh, your guys comments if you do get to this uh, point of this video wh while where you're still listening to me okay let's keep watching okay sorry guys just uh, i think the last part to guide you through this video so basically i'm here uh, I came back to the my initial brow, I fill out the color through the entire brow, having the light pressure at the front of the brow and a little bit more pressure at the tail. And then when I go through this whole brow, I put the numbing cream again, I go to the other brow, I finish with the other brow and then I put the numbing cream there and then I come back, coming back and forth till I reach, till I reach the desired uh, darkness now for more information don't forget to join my facebook group i always post their useful uh, posts and there's a lot of discussion going on up in there and i also do post on instagram tuesday and thursday and i have a beauty slash instagram and learn beauty slash so make sure you follow those both because on learn beauty slash i will do the live videos and i will do stories uh, in the future more about the useful information since i don't want to overlap with my beauty slash account and the last part for the white and black uh, pencils that you've been guys asking me i'm literally this is my like two babies that i'm working on so hard because I do want to bring the highest quality on the market there is. And I on my website it says they are 
up in uh, already this month but honestly it will take I think um, minimum three or four or five months uh, hopefully three months but let's say four more months to be alive the reason why I'm working on them so hard is this the procedures we are working on are connected with the blood so I don't want my product to have any irritation on the skin and for this reason I'm not using any other products this has to be a highest grade materials it has to be the best for the client without no irritation it's safe to use during the procedure and okay so I'll uh, let's guys uh, keep let's keep watching and I'll see you next week and check out the playlist for the shading there's a playlist for the behind the scenes on the paper on the latex and stuff like that oh my god I'm just taking so much time of you listening to me okay I should stop talking I stop already